you hear of a tree like knocking over somewhere up the mountain. Magma! Oh, I think we should go. I think that's the. I think, yeah, I think you're sounding like really good right now. Let's I think go to the that's, beach. Let's go to the beach. Yeah, let's go. Welcome to the Indigo League, where trainers grow and bond with their Pokemon to become the very best and prove themselves unbeatable. We are unbeatable. We'll train until we meet our goal. The stakes are high. No, we won't fall because we are unbeatable. Last time on Unbeatable. Uh, these two slow ass Pokemon run at each other and this Totodile bites into the Quagsire, uh, freezing it over and flinching it, jumps on its back and starts to pound it with a water gun, jumps up into the air and hydro pump, defeating it in three swift moves, the Quagsire never taking a proper turn. Oh. There's a small Pokeball in her hand. Gibble, the land shark Pokemon. Let me see how, to how Louie's <laughs> going to react to this Pokemon. Totodile, Gibble. And there's like... <laughs> There's some level of like, oh, this is gonna work. This is gonna work. Yeah. <sighs> Let's get the hell out of this town. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the world of Pokemon and thank you for joining us today. Getting into today's session, we find ourselves standing outside of the Pallet Town uh, Pokemon Police Department. There's no Pokemon in that title. I added that word for no particular reason other than, you know, algorithms. Uh, and we find ourselves there as our three trainers uh, are waiting on the Pokemon Rangers to come back to the to the police center to bring them on their way to Cinnabar Island after leaving Pallet Town for what? This is going to be the third time you guys are going to leave Pallet Town? Third try is the charm. Third is the charm. Yep. <laughs> yep. You guys have been back here so many times. Um, I think that, well, see, last episode we actually left off with Corinne attempting to commit a crime, but she wasn't caught. So we're gonna we're gonna go forward from there. <laughs> um, it, right, the, I was distracting the I was distracting Officer Jenny. So Officer, Officer Jan, Jenny, it's not even Officer Jenny. <laughs> Officer Jen, great to see you. How has it been going since uh, you know the whole terrorist attack thing? Are you uh, is everything going good? Look, uh, uh, let's let's you know, let's walk and talk. It's been it's been it's been so long. It's been like a week and a half. I don't know. Just <laughs> roll me. Just roll me a charm roll. Don't forget to add your badge. Uh, Let's go. D twelve, baby. Remember, you get to add your badge twice uh, because of your ace trainer ability. Because of my ace trainer, which means that's an eleven. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, with an eleven, you easily distract Officer Jan, uh, as we kind of determined last uh, session. Uh, and the other two can make their way out of the department before you join them a few seconds later. With this, real quick, before we get going and the rangers actually arrive and you all start taking off, there was nothing else you needed from Pallet Town. We did all that last time, and I believe you all went shopping as well. And in the in the, in the the off time, you uh, completed your shopping lists, right? Yeah, no, there wasn't anything else that I needed no. to pick up. Yeah, we got, the, we got oh, the rod. Yeah, okay. With that then, after maybe 15, 20 minutes after they left, uh, you'll hear... <laughs> as uh, eventually the rangers <laughs> land uh, a small flock of Pidgeot and Pidgeotto uh, just in the center of the street in Pallet Town. You can see onlookers immediately just kind of like... It's not a weird thing that Pokemon are kind of out in the middle of the city, but it is notable when like three Pokemon rangers descend with a small flock of large birds... Um, but immediately you can see that uh, Ranger Robert is at the front of the at the front of the pack and goes, "You all ready to go?" I believe so. Ranger Robert, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, what's up? How? What do you feed these things? Get them so big? Oh, see the so we don't actually own these Pokemon. Um, these Pokemon are just kind of wild Pokemon, and the ones farther out always grow a little bit bigger than the rest of their species. Right. Okay. Okay. But if you want some tips on like getting big Pokemon, I'm sure we can we can send you some recipes or something. It's mostly just in the nutrition like that you give them. I just I, I think it'd be real cool if I could just like hop around like you guys do with with my own buddy buddy buddy. No, that's that's I, I'm not really an expert in like Pokemon nutritional stuff. I more do triage and like care for them or talk to them. But uh, we've we've got please, some please. people who I mean you can also just look it up. It is available online. You know, you okay. can just Google it. Seth's pretty good with that stuff. I'll, 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 I'll set later. 
That's probably a good idea. Your your buddy Seth was was really good with Pokemon. Does Google exist in this world? I'm sure there's some equivalent. I'm gonna use the verb we Google. Are, we've, yeah. We've named we have named Google in this world before, Did and we? I forget what it was. Yeah, there was a point where we made a joke about Googling something. I don't remember what it is. Dang. Anyway. You guys are eventually led by the other two rangers. They both hop off of their individual mounts and bring you over to each of your own uh, Pidgeots. They're putting you on some of the larger, more experienced Pokemon. Uh, and these birds are massive. Uh, they are over five foot in height. Uh, they are basically bigger than you at this point. Uh, and they have these long, beautiful uh, brown feathers that kind of pull off with like bits of like beige plumage and these beautiful like pink crowns that come off the top of them. Um, can each of you give me a Pokemon handling check, please? I'm going to say DC four, but if you get significantly higher than that, there will be good stuff. I got a 16. I got a three. I got a five. For both, for Seth, you're pretty familiar with most Pokemon and your like knowledge of having flown on the back of Spur before definitely prepared you to like learn how to get your weight over the side of the Pokemon without harming it. Gavin, as somebody with flying type specialization, this is second nature to you. You just very instinctive about getting up onto the back of your Pidgeot. Uh, Corinne, you go to like do as the ranger said and immediately like feathers pull away as you like grab a little too hard. Whoa, whoa, Corinne, no, no, don't oh do that. Oh my God. Grab you, yeah! oh. <laughs> like come off the side and just like. I immediately just, let go. Yeah. <laughs> I, can looks, I jump off and go help? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Go ahead and roll. I'm going to say you have to roll the previous difficulty plus Corinne's failure. So it's going to be four plus three is going to be seven. You have to roll a seven or higher in order to, in order to calm down this Pidgeot. I have a Gavin's doing barrel rolls through this guy. This is not going to be good. I, no, I just, I'll walk. I'll walk. Oh, actually, no, I, I got an eight. <laughs> oh, shut up. Okay. So actually, with an no, eight. I'm sorry. No, this is a nine. I rolled a nine. I'm bad at math. Yeah. With a, with a nine, you are very easily able to like, come over and as the rangers are starting to try and like calm down the Pidgeot uh Seth immediately comes over and takes a hand like runs it down the side of the crown over the the kind of neck plumage uh you see your Pidgeot uh I'm very sorry. sad sorry. she's just strong she didn't mean it I'm so sorry uh and one of the other rangers comes up because uh yeah Corinne I think maybe, maybe try this one I think I think this Pidgeot maybe 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 not I could probably swim I I don't need to fly <laughs> no, I can okay. make it I that's Give okay. Everybody here. has it happen that ends. every once in a while. Um, and uh, with okay. with everyone's help and attention, you can eventually get on the back of your Pidgeot. Everyone's uh, like, one, two, two three. three. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so red and embarrassed. It feels awful. Just yeah. So oh, Corinne, you look like a Voltorb right now. <laughs> where, Corinne, as you get up on top of the Pidgeot, you're now like maybe like 10 feet in the air, given that like you're on top of like a five foot thing and then you're as tall as you are. So you look around and you can see that like there are people in the street just kind of like kind of like giving you looks like that was a very public thing that just happened. <laughs> um, but oh, this you is your hometown. Everyone face. knows you. I cover my face with my with my bob. Yeah, this you is your hometown. No That's not gonna help. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone no here knows me. who you are. You worked at the Pokemon. No one can see me. <laughs> All right, Corinne, are you good up there? <laughs> Nope. Shouting out her name so the people know. It's her. Guys, this is amazing. <laughs> Gavin hasn't even left the ground yet and still like, this is amazing. I'm invisible uh, and I don't exist. I'm invisible and I don't exist. As you all get on top of your Pidgeots in varying states of shame, uh, you guys, uh, varying states. It's either none, none, or a lot of it. Uh, and cool. the Rangers both hop on the back of their uh, Pidgeotos, and uh, Ranger Robert actually never unmounted from the Pidgeot that he's riding. Uh, and Ranger Robert pulls out like a small, like orange whistle and gives a, like a shrill, like a like blow on the whistle. And uh, as it does so, all the Pidgeots seem to seem to recognize the, the signal to take off and all of them kind of in sync start <laughs> doing like large uh, flaps for the wings. And it kind of creates like a little gust underneath each of you. And you can see like, average uh people going by on the street they're they're like clothing and hats kind of being buffeted by the wind as you all <laughs> into the sky um taking off from just like dead stop to full soaring through the sky corinne it is the first time you are seeing your hometown from above 
And uh, how does Corinne feel about flight? Because I know how Gavin feels about flight. Gavin loves flight. Corinne, well, generally, generally it would have been fine, except for the previous experience that just happened. <laughs> and now is almost too afraid to hold on to the Pidgeot tightly. So uh, feels kind of just loose up in the air, very scared. <laughs> um, doesn't want to like hold on to the Pidgeot because too scared, too scared, very much scared. Is all anybody right. on it with Corinne? <laughs> no, no, you're all solo riders right now. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, can I, so can I see if Corinne is, is just kind of like, Doing what Birdie, what, like, what Gavin's doing, but in a more scared way. way not for, to for audio things. listeners, Gavin has been making silly, happy faces <laughs> and spreading his arms Titanic style. This entire the never time. ending story <laughs> yeah. is I, what I think he's doing. Um, Corinne's hands are like flat on the Pidgeot, but like she doesn't want to like grab the feathers, so it's like just like frozen. Corinne, arms. just it's like a it's just a, a hug. It's not even like you have to grab with your hands, just kind of she lean. She full hugs the neck of the bird. What? It's a question. It's not Okay, what's your question? My question is I got a six in on a poker handling check. How hard would it be? I don't want Ava flying alongside. I want to hold on to Ava so she can experience flying like this. I was actually that was gonna be my next question was do any of you have Pokemon out riding with you at the moment? Yes, Ava. I'm holding on to them. Ava is out. Okay, what about Bowie? Is Bowie out? Um, how did Bowie feel? How would Bowie feel going up to... Bowie was fine on Spur. With, uh, is Spur. Oh, if he's fine, he's fine. There is kind of like this magic of like the two of you who have your Pokemon out, who are already more comfortable, by the way, than Corinne being on the back of these large Pokemon, where um, Bowie sitting in front of you, Seth, is very much grabbing like the plumage, maybe a little too tight, but he's going, tell it to dial. And you can see like his like little like leathery like skin flaps on the side of his mouth. He's <laughs> being buffeted in the wind. There's a whistling noise from where air is going in his mouth from his tooth gap versus out where it normally goes. Gavin, as you grab uh, Ava, Ava is just kind of like, <laughs> and just like the most calm and serene. Cause even now at like her top speed, she cannot, match the speed that you guys are already starting to travel at. No. Uh, and this is a really cool experience for Staravia. I'm going to say both of you have a Pokemon out. Go ahead and take a friendship point for each of your Pokemon. Oh, yeah. I've, yeah, I've got, so I've got Ava. I'm like holding onto their ankles or, you know, whatever the equivalent of on a bird is. And, uh, <laughs> Brendan Lee Mulligan, let me know. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> their little footed talon knees. <laughs> the bit above their talon, the ankle bit. Um, so they don't fly off and Ava's just spread wings out, just gliding on the wind. And as you look over as well, Corinne, you're very nervous, but your like hesitant hands on the side of the, of the Pidgeot is nothing compared to uh, Vermilion, who is also on their own <laughs> Pidgeot, who Vermilion at this point has taken their hoodie and like put it and like done the thing where they they grab the drawstrings and pull it tight. But they also have taken both of their arms and just kind of like tucked them in and they're just a black ball of cloth on the back of their Pidgeot. Pidgeot's wearing a backpack. Essentially is what it looks like, <laughs> but it's just a vermilion backpack. Uh, and it is beautiful up here. Um, as you guys are rising, because a lot of this point right now is just the Pidgeot flapping and gaining elevation over top of the uh over top of the city and there are certain points where you feel the currents of like hot and cold air from the city below as you pass over the tops of like buildings and uh and streets you can feel the warm thermals coming up from the bottom these like large pillars of wind that are starting to grab the wings of your pidgeot and raise them higher and higher um because one of the things with with birds is they want to do the least possible amount of work. And as they're letting the hot wind kind of rise them as high as they can, eventually you guys get to the point where Pallet Town is visible, but the people in it are not. They are specks on the ground. Um, you can barely see cars at this point, to be honest, moving around, maybe the size of ants. There is this sense of vertigo that is either positive or negative, depending on who you are. Um, but immediately you can all feel when your Pidgeot following Ranger Roberts' Pidgeot um, kind of in formation, letting the letting the wind flow off of both of uh, all of their wings. They turn and just spread their wings, and whoosh, you feel them catch the air and begin to soar, gliding forward at the slightest incline down, um, letting themselves just glide on the winds. And it is moments before you have already passed over 
a large section of land and Pallet Town is disappearing over the horizon. Horrifying. Great. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the juxtaposition of Corinne going horrifying <laughs> and Seth pulling out his new polka gear to take photos is pretty funny. Uh, well, I how think quickly we got do you Seth think... the fucking the Wii remote wrist strap? <laughs> wrist strap <laughs> <laughs> That feels like a Seth thing to have. <laughs> uh, how long does it take Seth to open the camera app on his new phone? Oh, um, probably a good five, five to ten. Five to ten minutes, yeah. So by the time you're taking photos, like Pallet Town's long in the distance. Like, I'm looking through it. I'm trying to find it, and then I'm having Bowie help me look for it. Too. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know where it is. Told it. Told it. Told wanted it. to take a picture <laughs> when we took off. No, stop yeah, swiping. It's the other way. He <laughs> never <laughs> opened it. It was the calculator the whole time. <laughs> now, that's gonna be the first time he tries to set his alarm. It'll be the calculator. <laughs> okay, cool. Guys, we took a picture. It's 14, 14 pictures were taken. Oh. 14 pictures. <laughs> As you move um, across the land section of Route 21 and you hit the ocean, immediately you can feel a difference in the air as like the, the kind of like salty, humid water of the ocean starts to drift up. And it's refreshing, but also reminds all of you of the last like day and a half immediately of being out on the ocean. And it is not all sunshine, uh, very specifically, as you finally make it onto Route 21, patches of storms are still there, but they are very low in the sky, and you all seem to be flying over top of a lot of those clouds. Um, passing by a lot of storm below you, you can see kind of like roiling white and gray clouds. Do we, um, I know we're above the clouds. Are there any breaks in the clouds where we can look down onto the ocean? There, it's very patchy, and instead of one large storm anymore, it's lots of chunks of storm that move very unnaturally, that do not move in like a large, like circular cyclone of even a large storm. It's it's almost like, um, it's almost like isolated patches of like rain dance versus like a ton of different, uh, like a natural storm. Through the patches, uh, are there any sites of the island that we were on? Oh, that's or... still a ways down the route for now. Oh, okay, like we're so far from that. Yeah, that because that like, was random boats. Uh, as you're still like leaving the mouth of the river, yeah, there are actually quite a few boats. Um, where you're at now on Route 21, that kind of opens out where that'll go down and across to Cinnabar. But it also there are other routes that are m mostly for shipping and less for trainers that will go directly across to head more towards a south like easterly direction to head towards Seafoam, like direct from Seafoam to from Route 21. Um, so you can see like a variety of larger like trade vessels. You can see a couple fishing vessels. Um, there's some personal sailing vessels out on the water. Um, people seem to be out and about today. My arms are getting tired. <laughs> you guys you get, get a, you a still group having fun? call? Okay. Ravia! <laughs> we get a group call? Yeah, I do a little group call so that we can all talk while we're flying. <laughs> okay, sounds good. There's, there's like immediately like the sound of like... <sighs> But it's kind of like it, it's like a like like a sound canceled. So it's like it, every time anyone talks, you hear like the. <laughs> Who he says he Silence. spies something brown. You hear very muffled. Everything is darkness. Ain't no brown. Come from Vermillions. <laughs> no, that's not it. It's patch. You just hear Corinne go. Is though. it me shitting my pants? <laughs> oh my god. I was also gonna guess Corinne's pants. <laughs> I feel so bad for that bird. It was the bird. Me too. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Just profusely apologizing. Hey, we, we can now have a group text now that Seth has a new phone. We've had a group text. No, because you every time you joined it, you turned over all the messages green. Green? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. How long till we get there? Ranger Robert. Oh, let's see if I can fly up poster. And talk to Ranger Robert. How how much longer do we have to go flying wise? You look and you see you see him kind of looking and you go, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, not much longer. <laughs> <laughs> we got like twenty minutes into the flight at this point. There's still like two hours to go. Um, but as you look down. up at the Rangers, you can see that they communicate <laughs> via a series of like short hand signals and like patches of cloth that they pull out of a small bag on their on their waist. It seems like they have like nonverbal signals to be able to communicate on the back of flying Pokemon. Would I know any hand signals? I don't have a 
a sash Honestly, of sashes. Roll me just a straight education roll. Because your your mom is a ranger. I feel like you might have picked something up at some point. Uh, six plus my badge, so seven. Seven is really my badge. good. I'm going to say you can pretty easily tell a lot of the directional signals that they're giving of reading. At this point, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you do this, <laughs> and he raises, uh, at this point, two fingers. Two fingers. Two fingers. Two minutes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and he can't okay. hear you to dispute that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Two hours. Thank God. What? <laughs> two Two hours. <laughs> Yeah, do you think this is instantly... We're not teleporting. Normally Things take when I time. fly, everything goes black and I'm just suddenly there. That's... You're in your hoodie. That's what's currently happening. You, uh, everything is black. With you guys traveling for like two hours, um, Corinne, do you ever get more comfortable on the flight? Does the Pidgeot ever forgive me? <laughs> well, this Pidgeot isn't the one that you tore the plumage out of. Remember, they swapped you Pidgeot. Yeah, which one's that? <laughs> That one took off. That, they gave you a different one. It's just gone. Yeah, that one went home. It got hurt in my home. No. No, no. you know. Corinne feels so horrible the whole time. Like, no. It's okay. not a fun trip for Corinne. After maybe the first hour, Ava will insist on, on sitting in a lap, by the way, uh, Gavin. Yes. So you will no longer have to hold Ava a lift. As you, like, bring Ava down, it's that thing where your shoulders actually don't want to go down anymore because your tendons are all, like, stretched. Seth, after maybe the first 45 minutes, Bowie has rolled over and is just between your legs passed out. Just like, just snoring with the wind. You pull him back oh, into the ball. I'll put him out, yeah. Yeah. As the rest of the flight passes, you do eventually get to a larger patch of storms that's kind of uh, traveling over the winds. And Corinne, you haven't been, uh, you haven't been comfortable, but you have been careful and you've been keeping your eyes out. And you are the first one who would spot uh, the island below as you pass over it. Um, at this point, it doesn't look very different than it did, you know, maybe 12 to 15 hours earlier when you were there. You can still see as you're passing over that that large, like, door on the side of the island is still propped open. Is there, basically, I just wanted to clock the location of the island in reference to where we are. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I just want to be having an eye out for speedboats, anything that looked like Go ahead and roll me a spot hidden check. Actually, anyone who wants to help out, let me know, and we're going to add them all together, and it'll be a group check. Sure, okay. I'll do it. Oh, thank okay. God. <laughs> this is not great. <clears throat> I rolled a two. Okay. I Gavin, rolled a you roll? 14. And Seth, what did you roll? I rolled a three. Okay. So combined uh, from all of you, that is a 19, which beats the 15 that I was going to ask oh, for. Oh, nice. nice. With a 15... There are no speedboats or anything near the base. However, um, maybe quarter mile east, you notice a large dark shape under the surface of the water. Maybe uh, it's hard to ch judge distance with no trees and just open ocean, but it's larger definitely than a small boat would be. Um, it is near cylindrical, but tapered on both ends. And occasionally cresting out of the top of the water, there's like a large black metal fin that pokes out of the water. And this is how far from the island? Maybe quarter mile headed east away from the island. Can I send Ranger Robert a text about that? Uh, sure, absolutely. You can you can kind of pull out your your poke your your newer uh poke gear and do, 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 send a text. And uh, Seth, who's been keeping an eye on the other Rangers recently, you'll see that the there's a small watch on Ranger Robert's uh, arm that kind of lights up. And he looks down at it, and he looks back at the three of you and glances down over there. And you see, he pulls out like a small red or yellow, uh, red and yellow flag out of his back pocket, and flags the other two rangers. And he points down to that, and both the other two rangers go to go inspect that. Let's go. Nice. Um, you guys, however, do not change course, and over the next couple minutes, you lose sight of both rangers and the underwater uh, vessel, Thanks. whatever it might be. I didn't expect them to bring us. Yeah, uh, the, it's very much <laughs> yeah, a thing of okay? the rangers. They're trained for this. I if mean, they they're not. They can they're not it, they like, won't go in. yeah, and they're and they're not cops like Ace Trainers. They're there to make sure that wild Pokemon aren't being hurt. It's like Rangers are there to make to protect wild Pokemon. Ace Trainers exist to protect people. If that makes sense, that's kind of yeah. the two different like major divisions divisions that exist. Um, and both of them head away, and you lose sight of them. 
Corinne, you had asked to clock the location. It is at this point that you realize that the storm clouds in front of you are not storm clouds. There is a large mass of like white, gray, and black um, clouds in front of you that you recognize are not clouds. Uh, or not water clouds. They're dust clouds, volcanic ash. As you are not far from Cinnabar Island proper, when you had made it here yesterday, you were maybe another 20 minutes by boat from Cinnabar. Um, and as you look in front of you, the storm clouds kind of part just a little bit to where you can see now. Cinnabar is this spire of rock that at one point looks like it extended a lot farther um, out into the, or um, uh, uh, flatter, sorry, into the water. And you can see now that there's this like large spire of rock in the middle that leads up to a crater shaped top where you cannot see down into it, but there's a faint amount of orange light kind of peeking out of the edges. And there's this large plume of white and black smoke that almost seems to be eternally coming off the top of it. Um, the island itself is is curved and jagged in a way that looks like if water had just solidified in place. Um, there are sections of like small vegetation, like smaller trees, um, grasses, bushes that have kind of grown over the last couple of years, but they exist in swaths that aren't where lava channels and magma flow haven't burnt through them. For the most part, it doesn't look like there's anything inhabited about this island from above that you can see. We know there's at and least then, one kook living we're there. We're sure there's a gym there? <laughs> um, it's been a I minute. Know. I haven't checked on the gym leader here to see if like he was still around more or less than just the registration being here. Well, didn't they say he's in a, a shack? Uh, I've got my... Uh, my like silk scarf pulled up over my uh, mouth and stuff. I'm Ooh. gonna try and look. I bought binoculars. <laughs> you bought binoculars. You did I buy binoculars. binoculars. <laughs> I like I like lift my hand off the pigeon and I'm like, oh, I can. I'll look for it. What? Do we know what side it's on? <laughs> uh, at the moment, you were not told. However, give me your own independent spot hidden check. Okay. <laughs> with advantage with binoculars? No. This is, the binoculars are letting <laughs> her make the check. What was it? Four. Hey, you finally hit the difficulty. Yay. So, <laughs> I didn't change it from the sub from earlier. <laughs> okay. So, uh, as you, uh, as you, like, look around, you eventually do see that in lar one of the large vegetated swaths, um, it kind of parts unnaturally at one point, where lava definitely hasn't touched it. Um, but there's, like, a slight open field and a small brown, like, honestly, it looks like a survivalist wooden cottage. Like, <laughs> it, it doesn't look like it was professionally made uh, on the east side of the island. I can't wait to meet this guy. Imagine the guy who's here is like, can I make a gym badge? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> does the carving thing. <laughs> does, the, does the, like, the stone uh, napping thing all on its own. Yeah. But you do, you do spot it. However, Corinne, as you spot where the shack is, Ranger Robert actually starts to put you guys down on the north side of the island. Um, and you're confused at this. Uh, this flying specialized... Uh, Birdie, can you make me a flying specialization check for uh, Gavin, please? Sure can. Um, what die would this be? Uh, go ahead and make this an intelligence. This is... this is Like, there's a bit of education in this, but I think this is mostly, like, taking in knowledge as it is now, so go ahead and make this an intelligence check. Good, because I'm I'm bad at one of those things. <laughs> um, Alright, that's a 12 plus one type spec plus my badge is a 14. With a 14, you can immediately tell the reason that uh, Ranger Robert's putting you down where he is is because as you guys are traveling, the wind is kind of pushing north on the ash and volcano smoke. Uh, and immediately the hot air, you can feel it on the edges of the feathers for the Pidgeot. It's probably not a good idea for them to fly too close in this condition. If you were approaching from any other direction, it might be easier. But for now, he's just going to put you down on the North Shore. After a few moments of descending, you guys actually pass back through the first set of storm clouds and feel like a weird... You've gone from like hot, gritty air from the volcano immediately into like cold, wet air from the, the clouds... And then you immediately pass through it and end up back in smoky air. And it is doing work on your lungs. My paws are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been so exfoliated. <laughs> Just hummus being shot at your face. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, eventually, though, you guys pop down under the cloud layer, under the smoke layer, uh, down, 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 eventually. 
All of you can feel the feet of your Pidgeot making, like, touching down on the sand of the beach to the north shore. Oh, we made it. Yeah, cool. Oh, man. I kind of, like, locked can my back down? in a... Uh, you're good. Yeah, you yeah, can. You're we're good. down. Oh, that was a long flight. I'll hop off the bird and say thank you for that. Appreciate it. Puff, puff. Pidgeot. Pidgeot. Corinne is, like, stiff arm, stiff leg, doesn't want to... And I'll walk over uh, to help Griffin. Do you need help? help me down. I don't yeah, Ranger to... Roberts, like, uh, do, you, do you need help? Well, I just. Yes. I don't. I don't want to hurt the. I mean, Pidgeot can take care of it for you if you need help getting off. <laughs> yeah, just, just yeah Pidgeot, roll. he goes, hey, hey, unload it. And Pidgeot, and Pidgeot just stands up straight and does this. And you just feel your weight. <laughs> do, 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 do. Slide, slide up the back. <laughs> yeah. Ranger Robert turns to all you guys and he goes, so we got you to the island. Um, That was a good call off. Earlier, I'm gonna go check on them and make sure that they're okay. Are you guys good here? You're okay to make your way to the shack? Do you see it? It's on the east side. Yeah, uh, yeah I think we sure yeah. ain't got good. it. Um, and uh, you know, feel free to let us know what that weird thing was. It looked like it was a large like fish, but made of metal and possibly involving like blue rocks well, or something. Well, it knows? might not be our jurisdiction, depending on what it is. So we might need to pass it over to the ace trainers. In which case, I can't tell you what's going on. Sorry about if that. You could. I mean, uh, it's fine. Just feel free to inform us on cool stuff that happens. Anyway, thanks for this. This was yeah. great. Uh, if you guys end up needing anything else, uh, let us know. Uh, obviously, we're not a taxi service. We are busy, but like, if an emergency comes up or you need anything, you got my phone number. Roger. I mean, Robert. All right. See, See ya. <laughs> <laughs> he turns and his Pidgeot. <laughs> Uh, takes off. I thought that was funny, was it not? It seemed like it was. Perfect. I thought it. I thought it was good. All right. Do we need to take Wait five? Are you guys okay? Are you? Uh, are you okay? Yeah. Evan, are you going over to Gavin? No. <laughs> <laughs> Silvery, like big, juicy one piece tears Don't just down Gavin's you. face. <laughs> I feel uh, like everyone had a different experience riding here. Did you guys have a pleasant experience? Because that wasn't my experience. That was yeah, majestic. It was great. Who and I played I Spy. It was great. I think that confirmed I I never want like a like a proper flying type. <laughs> like, yeah, this is not for me. Air travel. Well, hey, good news is while we make our way over to the shack, if we happen to find any Pokemon, you guys can catch some fire type Pokemon if you want to. Heck yes. On I've been a bad trainer, and I don't think I should catch any Pokemon anytime soon. Cause I haven't pulled this Weedle out since I caught it. Oh my god. <laughs> Vermilion. Also remembered, uh, and they reached into their bag. We bought floaties before we went on the boat, and we never put them on for the entire time we were in the ocean and almost drowned. Mm. Well, hey, so I'm cool very thing forgetful. About hindsight is we now know, and uh, we're at a place where we can do some like intense training. I so need you, you can... each to take your set of floaties, so I can't be responsible for you not drowning anymore All because right. I did a bad job. <laughs> Come on out, Weedle. And the, the immediately the Pokeball jumps there. And you can see a Weedle appears. It's on all like six feet. And it's just looking at each of you. And then it bolts. <laughs> it runs? <laughs> it oh, runs no. away? <laughs> yeah. Vermillion takes off running after it. I'm going to take Queenie they out. Didn't, they didn't release it, did they? <laughs> no. Right. You okay. take your Beedrill out? Okay, yeah. <laughs> And your Beedrill turns and goes, Beedrill! <laughs> does, that, does that help the Weedle feel more at home? <laughs> no, the Weedle's still dodging in the opposite direction. That's not going to do anything right now. Queenie's going after the Beedrill. <laughs> okay, you, you tell Queenie to go after it? Yeah, go after it. What's Queenie's speed? Queenie's speed is its not low, but it's not high. I just dropped Favorite the Favorite Ace Trainer thing? Um, oh. I'll, I'll give you an extra only... five feet to speed because of the quick because of the quick got 35 man. feet. It's definitely faster give... than a Weedle. Yeah, this Weedle, I'm pretty sure, has, like, 15 feet. So, after you see Vermillion, like, hands out in front of them, like, running. No, Weedle, come back! <laughs> Queenie eventually gets there and just picks it up with the two pinches. He goes, Weedle, Weedle. <laughs> and just immediately, like, big tears forming in its eyes. Weedle. No, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm so sorry. Oh, I rolled a nine on the animal handling plus two. So it's going to be 11. Pokemon handling. Or Pokemon handling. That doesn't matter. It's fine. 
the room and goes, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Weedo's like, Weedo, and just starts crying. Oh my God. Of course, Queenie is standing there. A lot yeah. <laughs> more chill than this. Well, um, okay. So uh, <laughs> I think if we do some training, that relationship could get better in time, maybe, hopefully, right? I should hope so. <laughs> we don't. You, right. you well, gotta do something uh, here. I, I, I don't think being helped by Queenie is, is calming this Weedle at all. You are. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and they grab Weedle, and Weedle's like Weedle, 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 like thrashing back and just... forth. As, I'm so sorry. Here, just go back in here, and uh, just puts it back in the Pokeball. All right. We'll work. We'll, we'll work on. We'll work on that. Um, but. Yeah. Let's let's start making our way to the uh, to the shack. If I look in the eastward direction, what is in front of us? So there are large swaths of like burnt blackened stone uh, from the lava that is kind of pulled its way down the side of the mountain. But there are also like bits of like young forest that exist across it. Um, but there's also the beach. So if you want to go the long way, you can just follow the beach all the way around to the east, or you can cut through the forest and and uh, stone slabs. What do we feel? Beach or stone forest? I'm torn because at the same, at one point, like, one time, like, possible fire types, other hand, possible water types, and I am kind of here to catch a water type. Beedrill. Beedrill looks extremely offended by the I need to catch more Pokemon. Okay, Queenie, you want to go, um, let's go fight the fire type gym. Is that going to be cool? Beedrill. <laughs> Sassy. Sassy. That's one. Queenie is a relaxed nature Pokemon. What is I know, this? <laughs> and you're really getting on this Beedrill's nerves. You're not training it. You're not battling with it. You're not doing I'm anything with it. I'm training it in the downtime. What downtime? <laughs> the times when we've been on the road between Viridian and Pallet Town. All right, fair enough. Corinne just goes, I'm also kind of ambivalent, although uh, you know me, I'm always down for a hike, so. So mountains, beach. Million, what do you think? So... I actually really wanted to come to Cinnabar because I was hoping that maybe I could like see if there's anything here that I could use as like a natural magmarizer. But that also means that magmar are gonna be in the area and they like to blow things up. We have some pretty strong water types. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Vermillion, I feel like when you say that, it didn't instill confidence in our team. Like they, they walk up to you and put a hand on your shoulder. Seth, I have lived the last 19 years of my life with no amount of confidence in anything that I have ever done. I'll put a shoulder, <laughs> hand on their shoulder. You gotta do better. <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried. Did you see Weedle? <laughs> it, I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you. We'll do some training and exercises on... Okay, all right. I'm just gonna... Do it. All right. Off okay, <laughs> we'll take the stone, we'll take the stone, stone path. Karim, okay. we need to get vermilion therapy. We, is that in okay. the budget? All on, all on their own time. Vermilion okay. has the budget. Vermilion, vermilion is, the budget. is the budget. We got like eight grand. I, mean, I don't know. Vermilion bought like a whole tent and was like, "I'll get you guys whatever you want." So to but. clarify, you guys are cutting through the forest and volcanic rock, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what the party votes. Each of you make me uh, your choice of a strength or fortitude uh, athletics check. Can I bring Bowie out? Uh, you can absolutely bring Bowie out. Immediately, Bowie kind of pops out, and he's still sleeping. But as you release him, he's just in the sand. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Wake up, buddy! I'll kick the sand a little bit so it goes on my <laughs> belly. <laughs> just sprays you with water in response to the sand. That's hilarious. We're on a beach, uh, so let's go. <laughs> Not even please. Seth is in the correct clothing to be randomly sprayed with water yeah, at any given I'm time. <laughs> um, let's see. This Seth is, is always ready to go on a water ride. Yeah, this is the strength or fortitude. What did you roll? Uh, 17. 17, okay. Brennan Gavin? I rolled an 8. Rolled an okay, an 8 and an 18. Across all of you, even Gavin does pretty well on an athletics check. Uh, and I know that's because he was using his fortitude and not his strength. Uh, but the hike that Corinne puts forth is less of a hike like that you would expect to find in a jungle environment. But as you get to a lot of the molten stone that has been solidified at this point, it almost forms like a smooth, hard pack similar to like asphalt. 
So as you guys kind of try and make your way up a little bit farther into the island before cutting over, it's actually a really smooth walk up the side of the mountain. It's only when you have to like jump down from that like channel to get up on top of the next one that it is difficult in any way to move. Um, can I get a group? So we're gonna add all these together. A group spot hidden check, please. Um, may I also say that I would... Uh, pull, this die is rolled a two uh, four times in a row. You should probably use a different die though. Um, I'll go ahead and pull Myrtle out at this point. Um, okay. And just have Myrtle riding on the shoulder. Okay, as you as you kind of like release Myrtle, it's square to square! Square it out. I was very Surprise. much expecting some kind of battle when they jumped out. Nope. Nope. Way to square be ready, out. though. Way to be ready. No, that was a great job. And I give her a little fist bump. Square it out. With her little silk scarf, like all pulled up on her, on her, on her, like, like a kerchief just up on her neck. So cute. With that, what was everyone's spot hidden checks? I rolled a nine. Surprisingly worse. I rolled a one, so that gave me a two. I also <laughs> rolled a two. <laughs> Dang. Okay. But with the 13, that's going to be enough to note, however, as you're walking around, you don't see a lot of the evidence of ground Pokemon. And I don't mean ground type. I mean Pokemon that live on the ground. As you're walking in kind of like the volcanic ash that kind of coats all of the, all of the different trees and the the floor there's not a lot of things that have disturbed it you see occasionally evidence of bird-like pokemon um every once in a while you'll see like a spiro or a pidgey kind of pull themselves out of the the trees um but for the most part it's kind of unnervingly devoid of small pokemon of ground-based pokemon there isn't really rattata running around there's no manky swinging between the trees there's no weedles on the on the sides of trees um there's no burrowing diglet anywhere it just kind of seems Lonely. Should we shout out to see if there's any Pokemon nearby? Would they respond to that, or are we being too loud already? And guys, away? there's not gonna be Pokemon nearby. Don't you remember this place blew up like tw like 15, 20 years ago? No new Pokemon oh, yeah. have come here that didn't live through the blast. But like, I feel like Magby and Magmar around here because oh yeah they're they're all probably up near the volcano though is the thing down here oh, in the forest there's aren't. there's probably not a lot of stuff i feel like we made the somber decision yeah it's really sad actually i mean you want to okay. hike straight out towards the beach and we'll just continue that way <laughs> i feel like we'll be adding a lot of time we can no it's 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 less about like the pokemon thing but i just remembered that's probably why there's not a ton of stuff here that makes sense do you think there would be any remnants of what you're looking for for a magmarizer here, or would that be? Oh no, that's gonna be that's gonna be the top, and I assume that we'll probably spend a few days here, so I'll make that its own hike. Um, Gavin, I don't know if you know, but there used to actually be a city on this island. I didn't know. Oh yeah, it it the island erupted a couple decades ago, and uh, now there's not a city on this island. Wow, that's that's that is what <laughs> happens when things erupt. Yeah. Ah. Uh, it, it, pretty much everybody who lives in Seafoam, though, they evacuated from here. So most of the people made it out. But all the Pokemon that, like, naturally live on the island, uh, and they kind of gesture to the empty forest. You're really painting cool. a whole story for us here there, Vermilion. Yeah. Hey. Well, okay. They definitely were, like, into the story in that they really like somber and sad things, but they weren't, like, joyous about it you know what i mean no, yeah, yeah definitely yeah. it is a little sad though to know that there's no other like small ground pokemon here i'm gonna take a few steps we've been like pretty quiet haven't we oh yeah hello 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 kind of echoes off the side of the stone mountain um for several seconds you hear oh shit <clears throat> of a tree like knocking over somewhere up the mountain. Magma! And you see doof, a large plume of like magma and fire go sprang up into the air, probably quarter mile north of you off into the distance. 
Oh, I think we should go. I think that's the. I think, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's really good right now. Let's I think go to the beach. The, let's go to the beach. Yeah, let's go. Actually, let's yeah, you, exit. you guys <laughs> want a Pokemon? I don't know. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a good call. Just uh, mixed bag, mixed bag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you all start running. Do 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 to the beach. Um, it isn't more than like ten minutes before you <laughs> follow one of the lava shoots, and that's like a clear shot down straight to the beach. You can see the the sand, and you, <gasps> and it's that thing of like you know when you're running down a street that's downhill, and you're like your speed starts to get away from you a little bit. Can everyone make me just a straight fortitude check? Well, that would be a two. <laughs> oh Ooh. no! Um, so I got a five. Okay, and then and then Seth? I got a 19 plus 1, 20. So Seth, surprisingly, Seth, surprisingly, is the only boy. one who is not injured, and I think this is karma for the beginning of the campaign. Because <laughs> all three of the people you are running what? with, Seth, <laughs> their speed gets out from under them, and they just immediately do, 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 just start rolling, tumbling on the rock. You see Vermilion, like... Tuck and roll, never, never. Like, uh, Gosh, you Gavin just trips fans. over his like he, you know, his very beautiful Pokeball sneakers. Um, Corinne just like doo, 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 down the side of the hill. Oh, Seth, yeah. you were smart enough. You're wearing sandals. You got grip, and you're just Sport mode. running. You're just going. <laughs> you're just, you know, <laughs> life is Sport like mode. a hurricane. Uh, you're just going down the side of the the mountain. <laughs> Everybody else, you're gonna take two minor wounds. Yay. <laughs> See, it's when it, uh, it drops as off is what as... messes me up. If it's just a straight shot, got it. <laughs> My last pair of Poke oh, Trainers. Yeah, no. Corinne's body mass alone held yeah. way too much momentum. Um, as soon as Corinne like, felt the trip happening, Corinne like, grabbed Myrtle and went, <laughs> protect oh, yeah! Myrtle. And, like, tucked I like it how you protect the thing it. that is <laughs> covered defensive. in a protective yeah. shell over your fleshy skin. Yeah, I'm actually have you take an additional minor it's wound as you man. just have Myrtle like pressed into your chest. Don't Myrtle like rib. Yeah. Uh, you're oh, oh, one major wound. deep in the, in the shell as you guys roll, all three of you do, 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 finally stopping when you hit the sand at the beach. <sighs> <sighs> oh man, that got quick at the end. Oh, you guys fell. Oof. I got sand in my mouth. Ouch. There's so much sand in my hoodie right now. And as they stand up, you see like under the black hoodie, you just see like waves of sand from underneath. <laughs> oh, I already don't like this island. What's the what's the temp on this island? Uh it's it's pretty tropical. It's like probably like high 70s, low 80s, and humid. Oh, ooh, ah. Yeah. Um and as you look around, though, I'm going to go ahead and roll for the magmar. At this moment, you still hear in the distance, magma, but it's a lot more distant than it was previously and doesn't seem to be heading in your direct uh, direction. Hey, we learned a thing, okay? <laughs> oh, and what was that thing, Gavin? <laughs> there is a big magmar on this island. <laughs> Actually, Corinne, as you look around, uh, you got up. You have, at the current moment, lost sight of Myrtle. Myrtle? Myrtle, squat! From slightly in the distance. Like what direct? What direction? Towards the water. As you Myrtle? turn, Squirtle is about maybe chest height for the tiny Squirtle in the ocean. Water like lapping up over her shell, uh, and she's going squirt, 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 like out towards the water. Are you talking to somebody? Hey, squirtle, squirt. Uh, and uh, and <laughs> and squirt, 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 squirt. Just wait a minute. <laughs> One and <laughs> um, Gavin, I think, was the only one who spotted this last time. Gavin, go ahead and roll me a Pokemon uh, knowledge check. Go ahead and roll me whatever that's called. Whatever I named that. Pokemon. Pokelore. Pokelore, that one. Wow. <laughs> Fun fact, I'm bad at this. Fun fact, I exploded. <laughs> Twice. That's a 12, 13, 14. 14. You... <sighs> Let me actually check something quick before I respond to that. Gavin's gonna take his hoodie off because it's so sweaty and thing, and he's got like a black. It's like it's like a band tour T-shirt, but instead of being a band, it's like Cynthia World Tour, and it's from like three years ago. <laughs> nice. Um, as as you get ready, you look across where Corinne is kind of like stepped forward towards Myrtle, um, and Corinne would immediately recognize this on site, but Gavin, you would only recognize this from its rare appearance in the Sinnoh region. Um, and its presence yesterday 
uh, in large amounts swirling around uh, the edges of the rock uh, cliffs. There is a small horsey that's going, horsey! <laughs> uh, to Squirtle, uh, just kind of like splashing about in the water next to Myrtle. Guys, there's horsey! Squirtle, squirt, 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 Squirtle. Squirtle, Squirtle, Squirtle. Horsey! Those were, the, those were the things in those whirlpools yesterday. Can I can I get a gist of like what the conversation is that's happening right Give now? Give me a poke a handling <laughs> check, please. Oh no. And she totally it... ripped out the feathers of that bird poke. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get me the hell out of here. And then Weedle took off into the forest. <laughs> what a smart guy. <laughs> Our trainers suck. No, <laughs> no after I met my trainer, I almost killed someone. <laughs> Did you know that the Twice. only way to get horsey in uh, in uh, diamond, pearl, or platinum is to fish with a gold rod on one specific route, or a good rod in a specific route? Good damn. Fun fact of the day. I rolled a six. <laughs> uh, with a six, you are not able to get a gist of it, but it looks like a friendly conversation that's happening. You're not able to figure out maybe exactly what they're referencing to, uh, but it seems like they're chatting. Okay. I'll kind of uh, walk up, uh, not right behind Myrtle. I'll give them a respectable conversation distance. Um, Squirtle, Squirtle, kind of Squirtle, Squirtle. Squirtle. Uh, uh, Squirtle uh, looks oh, up so, at you like, what are you doing I'm right close. behind me? I'm sorry. Well, you were, I thought, I thought Squirtle. this and you, I. Is it one, Squirtle. Okay. It's Squirtle. Oh, you're right. Okay. It's Squirtle. And I take He's having take a conversation. I'm Squirtle. I'm sorry. I like how this would just relate to this because they don't have. <laughs> yeah, they got like three <laughs> fingers. They got like they got like, like this much. It's just yeah. like a tiny. It's like a tiny. Squirt a little nub. <laughs> it's squirt, 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 squirt. Uh, and eventually the conversation seems to finish, and Squirtle goes, "Is Squirtle?" <laughs> and points at Horsey. Yeah, now you. <laughs> oh, um, and I I walk up to the Horsey. I say, "Hi, nice to meet you." Horsey. Are you friends now? You guys are friends? Hey, horsey. <laughs> Good acquaintances. As you look at the horsey, uh, you'll notice, because this is this would not require a check, that there is a thin, like, bit of, like, plastic almost, like, kind of hanging off one of its fins. It's not, like, wrapped around anything. It's not in a dangerous position. But there's, like, a thin bit of plastic, like, wrapped around uh, one of, like, the like the scale sections that come off of the side of it. Because remember, this is a limbless Pokemon. It doesn't have like arms or legs. It's I got like a little thin thing on the back. It seems like you um, you got a little thing on you there. Horsey! And like immediately like pulls it away from you, like very protective almost it looks like. Do you want it on? Horsey! Oh. Oh, do, do you have a trainer? Horsey's going to go under the water for a second and pop back up. And it's got that thing where it's like trumpet-like mouth is closed at the moment. And it turns and just sprays at Gavin's face in that moment. You're now recognizing, putting the two dots together, that piece of plastic is the edge of a Pokemon rations container. Oh, damn. Whoops. And I'm gonna go <laughs> Oh! I'm so Matt still hasn't sorry, put it together yet. Matt still hasn't put I it together. Threw, I, to distract the, the swarming horsey away from the oh, whirlpools, I yeah. threw water rations into the water. Sorry, I was focused on the trauma. <laughs> <laughs> totally valid. <laughs> Can I help you with that? Horsey! Is he, he like letting leans me? The, leans the shoulder bit out to you. Okay, I'm gonna try and break the wrapping. It's like it's not even break. It almost looks like the the Pokemon has wedged it there to carry it themselves. Oh, okay. And then as you kind of pull it out, Horsey like looks at it and. <laughs> Sprays ink directly onto your hands all over it. Like, the, get that out of here. Jerk. Get that out of here. This is my ocean. You're making it a mess. What do you think I am? <laughs> That's the exact <laughs> vibe that the horsey is giving you. I'm look. I'm very sorry for littering in the ocean, but my friends were in danger. Okay, they were gonna. They could have died, and I, you and your friends were were kind of not on purpose, making the situation a little bit worse. Okay. Go ahead and roll a charm roll. Do I get to add any, do I get to add my battle notoriety? <laughs> no, you don't get to add battle notoriety. Um, Funnily enough, this wild horsey does not follow the league. A seven. <laughs> seven is actually pretty good. Oh, the seven, you can see some kind of like abashed like horsey. Horsey. So I would never <laughs> under normal water circumstances. In your face. I would never <laughs> under normal circumstances litter in the ocean, okay? Mm, 
but it, it looks to all of you and goes, horsey, 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 and looks at each of you. And it seems like it literally, like you get the vibe that it literally swam all the way here just to make Gavin pull trash out of the ocean. <laughs> wow. That's what I'm talking about. Committed. That's good. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> good level of pettiness. But not even petty, because it's just recycle. <laughs> well, I mean... Vermilion is going to lean up to you, Gavin, and go, Hey, weren't you talking something about a water type? I'm not getting the vibe this Pokemon is particularly friendly to me. That's <laughs> fair. That's fair. You could ask it. So, hey. Horsey! Like, like, what, what you have this whole conversation without me? I am I apologize, and I'm going to hold out. He doesn't, he has like a little, the, the little corn curled up tail, don't they? I'm going to extend yeah. my hand to shake his little tail. Okay. <laughs> uh, with the seven charm roll you rolled earlier, the tail kind of extends on. Horsey! Deal. I will never litter in the ocean again as long as I live. Trainer's on it. It's like almost like a challenge. It turns like spits ink into the water, like, and it looks very proud of itself. And it goes, horsey, horsey, horsey. In that moment, though, as it like looks very self satisfied, it then turns and looks back at the ocean and goes, ah, horsey. You would get the vibe that it came, did what it wanted to do, turned around and goes, I don't know how the fuck to get back home. Oh, little guy. It needs ketchup, Gavin. <laughs> horsey. Horsey, 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 horsey. He looks at Corinne like, horsey, 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 horsey. He can't catch me. <laughs> yeah, horsey. <laughs> what, you don't okay. want to be caught or you don't think you can be caught? Horsey, horsey. Horsey, horsey, horsey. And, and, and uh, Myrtle looks down at you and goes, Squirtle, squirt. Squirtle, squirt. And holds up two fingers, like the second thing you said. Wow. <laughs> Just don't think I can be caught. You know what? <laughs> you came here to teach me a lesson. Let's see it. <laughs> oh, I see. And I'm going to take out Prince. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he He's now trying ball. to float in like three feet of water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you take out Prince and the ball boom, and releases Prince who goes, Needle. He <laughs> just looks around very confused. <laughs> Prince, I <laughs> choose you. <laughs> Nita! Horsey goes, Horsey! Uh, and at that freeze frame of you being like, Prince, I choose you! That's where we're going to end today's episode because oh, we no, don't have on. time for a battle today. Come on! Oh. All right, uh, all right. Goodbye, good. everybody! Wait, can Myrtle Bye. officiate? Yes, Myrtle can officiate. Okay, <laughs> now goodbye, everybody! <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Unbeatable. If you want to support our podcast, please subscribe here and head on over to our Patreon. Our patrons get access to early episodes, bonus content, and rule breakdowns for our games. Thank you for sticking around and being unbeatable. I am unbeatable. I'll train until I meet my goal. If stakes are high, no, I won't fall because I am unbeatable. Earning every badge, whatever it takes, I'm gonna be the best trainer. You just wait, and I know the road ahead looks like it won't be easy. I am unbeatable. Standing by my side, got my friends with me to explore a whole world of possibilities. But no matter what the challenge is, we can overcome it together. Because we are unbeatable, we'll train until we meet our goal. The stakes are high, no we won't fall, because we are unbeatable. We are unbeatable, we'll train until we meet our goal. The stakes are high, no we won't fall, because we are unbeatable. unbeatable.